That said, um, Lisa, Kath will now tell us how to make memes. <laughs> That's a great intro. And I will talk about uh, the role of teenagers in using memes and creating memes. But I want to start out by letting you know, I'm going to be honest. When I signed up for this, I wasn't thinking about the fact that I was going to be presenting to people who are excellent teachers. And I just checked on my Apple Watch, my heart rate is 100. So this is going to count for cardio for me for today. But I have some talismans. I have a little baby Yoda, or not baby Yoda, regular old, old Yoda to give me strength. And I also made a felt dumpster fire as, a, as craft therapy. This encapsulates 2020, so I'll keep these on my side and keep going. Um, so let me see here. I've got to, hang on, I know how to do this. I've taught in Zoom for a while now. Um, I need to share my screen. So I titled this, How to Make Memes for Fun and Profit. And I just want to be clear that you actually don't profit from this. So it's just a joke. Um, I'm an associate professor in industrial organizational psychology at San Diego State University. And I know that's a lot, but you can just think organizational psychology. I am not the tell me about your mother kind of psychologist. I deal with human behavior in the workplace. So if you think about why workplaces might be awesome or why they might suck, those are the kinds of things that we study. Um, so I've been using memes for a, just a little while. I just started making them in November, so I'm still kind of new, but I'm excited to share with you what I've learned. When I talk about a meme, a meme actually can be a lot of different things. So it could be um, you know, even just a, a popular tweet. But when I talk about them, I kind of mean words plus image or video equals a meme and that they're usually kind of funny. So when you're putting together a meme, one of the things that you want to have a decent handle on is what's the concept that you're trying to convey with this meme. So that's one thing. Then the other thing is what image or video might match that concept. And then what are the words that you're going to use to convey this concept? Memes have to be pretty short. So academics, we can go on and on. You don't get a paragraph. You get a few words. So you have to be concise. So making a good meme is actually trickier than you might think. And I think of it as sort of a form, uh, because I'm a psychologist, I think of it as a form of scientific communication, but I mean, really it's, it's any kind of communication. So when I talk about the mechanics, um, you know, how do you get the words plus the image and the video? How do you make this work? And I think there's much to think about. When I first started making memes, I really got hung up on, should I be brainstorming concepts and words first? Should I be gathering images and videos first and then trying to figure out what matches? And the bottom line is, is there isn't a right way. So either way can work. So let me give you an example of a concept from my field that I would like to convey. So I'm gonna teach you a little bit of something from organizational psychology. Structured interviews are better than unstructured interviews. So if you let people interview applicants and just let them ask whatever they want to ask, what our research shows is that that introduces a lot of bias and it doesn't allow you to make good decisions about who the best people are to hire. So we recommend that you plan your interviews and that you have kind of the same questions that you're going to be asking all of the applicants. And so your, your interviews have this structure. So this is the concept that I would like to convey. And now I wanna to try to find an image. So where do I get the image from? Web search. Um, one of the things that I learned, and I should preface this by thanking my 17 year old kid who taught me in November how to make memes and taught me this phrase, meme template. So the meme, the image or the video that doesn't have any words yet, or maybe has some core words but doesn't have the extra stuff, is called a meme template. And if, even if you just go to images.google.com and search meme template in quotes, you will see a bunch of things come up already. So that's one really easy way to do that. Another way is to go into social media. So I think most people know about Instagram and you can't download pictures from Instagram, but you can screenshot them and use them. And so if you see something there, then um, you can screenshot that and use that as a visual reference. Reddit is another popular social media site and they have specific subreddits dedicated to meme templates. My favorite one is meme templates official. And if you don't know about Reddit, don't worry about it. There's other ways to get, um, get these images. Um, Pinterest is another one that I've heard of that I don't personally use, 
But social media is another place where you can get these images and these videos. And then finally, there's meme websites and apps. So imageflip.com and the Mematic app um, are two ways that you can get some, you know, some images. All right, so I see there's some things in the chat. I will get to the copyrights question in a little bit. Um, so my process for doing this is, you know, so for this concept that I had, I went to images.google.com and I searched for meme template. And so you see this one that I circled. Um, I decided to go ahead and, and give that one a try. It's not going forward. There we go. So when I went to there, I downloaded this image that was a pretty low resolution image and it was grainy. I don't think students mind, but I have like some limited standards. And so I didn't like that. Um, so what I found was that there's actually a name for this one. This one's so popular that it has a name and it's called the Drake Hotline Bling Template. I never imagined in my professional life that I would be using that phrase, but here we are. And um, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't even know what that means. I know the guy's name is Drake. Um, I don't know what Hotline Bling is about, but here we go. Um, if you search that name, for the template, then you can find a higher resolution image if that's important to you. And now it's time to put the words with the image. So on phone, and this is the way that um, my 17 year old taught me how to do this, is that you use markup. And so you get the image on your phone and you find how to get to markup and you can add text box boxes. So like, you know, just like you do in PowerPoint. So you add a text box, move it around, change the font color, the size, the whatever it is, um, and add your words. You can also go on the on the web and you can use imageflip.com, you can use imager.com, you can use kapwing.com. So there's lots of different places where you can go. If you already have skills in Adobe products like Photoshop or something or Illustrator, you're welcome to use those. I would not recommend that you go to Adobe to do memes if you don't already have those skills because they're pretty advanced. So here's the meme that I made and I went ahead and made it on Kapwing. You can see that it's got the little, um, the logo down here. And I, I don't think that that really matters that much. So what I have up here is, you know, Drake's turning away and it says unstructured interview. But then he looks pretty pleased because it's a structured interview. So this is just a really quick way to convey this concept that unstructured interviews are bad and structured interviews are good. Okay, so now I'm going to get to some finer points. Meme culture is a whole thing that it's helpful to have some knowledge of if you're going to be wading into making your own memes. Um, so learning what is popular. Right now, Among Us is really popular. It's a game that a lot of people are playing. And so it's helpful to know about that because then you can use those meme templates and be a little bit current and kind of understand what that's about. I find it extremely helpful to follow meme accounts. And I would say that actually, if you're interested in memes related to your field, look to see if somebody's already making them because they're pretty popular. And so I follow meme accounts in nursing and in law and in human resources. And so there's a lot of really fun stuff there. You also want to mine pop culture veins. So sometimes it's fun to just kind of fall down a rabbit hole of meme templates. And so Schitt's Creek, which is the, a show that uh, my virtual background is based on, has some amazing gifts. And those can be used in a lot of really fun memes. You can also find things on, you know, the adventures. I had a whole Baby Yoda series. Friday was Baby Yoda Day. So I just went for it. So that can be kind of fun too. And the scariest recommendation that I'm going to make is to befriend teenagers and ask them to help you. So my 17 year old said, Mom, don't use impact font. That's embarrassing. I said, What's impact font? And so, you know, I got an example of what that's like. And I was like, Okay, okay, I got it. Um, so, you know, it's helpful to, to have somebody to bounce ideas off of and befriending teenagers might be a way to do that. So here's a little bit of other minutia. Be safe when you're doing this because there can be some tricky things, which I think may have been alluded to in the chat. I stopped looking at the chat because it was distracting. So I'll get to that at the end. Um, so copyright and plagiarism issues can be a concern because some of the images may be stock images that could be owned. So I would say that if you're going to use them in a classroom that's in a learning management system, you're probably unlikely to be discovered using them. But if you're going to be on other platforms, then it might be something that, um, you know, a lawyer or something could discover. 
And there are some lawyers out there who are routinely looking for copyrighted images to try to send you harassing emails to send them money. So that does exist. Um, but I would say that based on my reading, and I am not a lawyer, so don't take this as legal advice, but I think it's covered under the fair use doctrine. So maybe somebody can weigh in on the chat with more information on that, which I'll look at later when I can look at the chat. Um, search the origins of the template. So if you don't have any idea where the template comes from, it might come from something that you don't really want to be associated with you or the class. And so that's something that can be helpful to just have some sense. And there's so many meme templates out there that you can choose meme templates from things that you do know. So I have watched the Mandalorian and I know where the Baby Yoda memes come from or meme templates come from. So I feel comfortable using them because it's, it's something that I know about. Um, finally, watermarks. So if you do have your memes out there and I do have my memes out there, um, then this is something that you may wanna put on your images so if other people are using them, then you get some credit for them. So let me give you an example. Here's a meme that I made and posted recently, which is about using continuous variables in your analyses, which I get is a little geeky. Um, but the um, right here in the toe of the right side out sock, you can see it says at IOPsych memes. So you see that right there where I'm putting the little oval. So that's my memes account is at IOPsych memes. And I, I just put in there a little small label using the same kind of markup tool um, and, and sneak that in so that if other people use it, at least I get some credit for doing so. Okay, um, don't worry too much about trying to be cool. So um, one thing is that you're not. So the other thing is that they'll cut you slack for trying. So um, I have some time set aside for practice, but I'm not sure we might be getting kind of close to time. So if you want to practice, let me give you some quick instructions. Um, on your phone, you can search for Drake Hotline Bling template. Find that image and save it onto your phone and then use the markup to add text. So this is kind of an easy way to just dip your toe in the water and see how it goes. Um, on the computer, you can go to imageflip.com and you know, search the same thing on there. So I have you know, right here where you would go to search on ImageFlip. And you can add words on that website and then download the image for use in your classes. Here's the instructions cheat sheet. I said pop in the chat if you have questions. Um, and then I'm ending with happy meme making. So here's my email address if you guys have questions. And there's my Twitter handle if that's helpful to you. I also have posted an infographic that I made a while back on how to make memes. And that's at the professors at play.org website. And then my memes account that I run is on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, in case that's helpful. So now I will look at the chat and see, oh, let's see the cheat sheet again, okay. And Lisa, you're not pressed for time. You have another five minutes, so. Oh, I do, okay, well then you guys can try, perfect. And I'll look through the chat um, and then I'll see if there's anything that I need to address or you guys can tell me if there's questions. Okay, copyright issues, I talked about that. I think there was kind of a discussion about humor versus appropriateness, of it not falling into some of the more, I don't know, maybe contentious areas of meme making. Mm -hmm. How do you avoid that? And, and how do you balance that you're not, your jokes aren't inappropriate intentionally or unintentionally? <laughs> and that's where it really is helpful to have somebody you can check with. Um, and, and teenagers can be great, but I mean, they don't know everything about this culture. And it's kind of why I have a tendency to stay within areas that I know. So like the, the Thomas the Tank Engine sock inside out versus right side out, that's, that feels pretty safe to me. I've watched Thomas the Tank Engine when the kids were little, I get that. Um, I see that Scott put something in here about Netflix and chill isn't about watching movies. Understanding what phrases mean if you're going to try to use them is really important because it you can really um, embarrass yourself. Let's see. Um, Nigel wants to buy teenage daughters. That's not suspect at all, Nigel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I know, and I know you're just kidding too. Um, but yeah, finding teenagers can be kind of tough. But I found that actually 
Um, you know, I work with undergraduate and graduate students, and even though some of them aren't teenagers, I put together a meme council of students. And I can, if I'm not sure about something, I can, I can send it to them and say, does this make sense? Do you understand it? Um, is it appropriate? And so, you know, is there a better way to word it? And so I think having a meme council is kind of a way around actually like getting teenagers to live with you, which is a lot. I'm not gonna lie. Um, so I think related to the appropriateness, there was a question about digital blackface. Mm -hmm. So I am not gonna claim to be an expert on that, but I, from what I understand, it's this sense that you're trying to appropriate um, another's culture with the way that you are using um, imagery, using phrases and terms and things like that. And I think it's important to be careful and to be thoughtful about that. Um, so I, I do try to make sure that there's, you know, diversity, I guess, with regards to the people that are being represented in the memes that I, I produce. Um, and I'm happy to hear other people's thoughts about that as well, because uh, I probably have things to learn there too. Your uh, memes are also, they seem very content and class related. So I think it would be, I mean, depending on what class one is teaching, but I think that's important too, right? That we don't try to overstep our bounds into making some kind of potentially cultural criticism that we use the material that yeah. we're trying to teach in the meme, not necessarily just using them just to be funny. I think that's right. when you would get into some kind of trouble. It's when you just want to look cool. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's the thing that I found to be really fun about this is um, just finding new ways to communicate information from my field, opinions that, that we have that we think everyone should know um, in a way that is memorable. And I've appreciated the stuff that we've talked about already in this symposium about the way that humor can make things a little stickier in your head. Um, I think that's pretty cool. So has anybody asked a question that I haven't answered? Let's see, where do you set up a memes account? I just created an Instagram account and a Twitter account and a Facebook page. They were all free. Um, I will say that I, um, I use Hootsuite, which is a social media manager as a way to post them. Um, but that's really about, um, saying cool is not cool, that's true. My memes are sick, um, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, I didn't tell you guys about how to create a meme empire in your field, which is a whole separate thing. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go over the basics of even how to create one. So if you had an idea for one or two that you wanted to put together, these are the basics. This is what I learned in November. On fleek, I missed that one. <laughs> uh, what meme channels do I follow? Okay, so uh, I know that there's one called Ner Memes Nurse Official. Gosh, I'll have to look on my Instagram. Um, let's see. Maybe I'll have to send out a list. And I will say the nursing memes in particular are super savage. They're, those, those folks do not mess around. Um, I think they're kind of funny. So let's see, how do I figure out how to get where I'm, who I'm following? Okay, so I follow like you know, other accounts that are in my field to get ideas. So what are people in my field talking about? Um, I follow the bitchy recruiter. I follow salty.hr.memes. I follow meme templates official. I follow uh, human resources memes. See where my nursing ones are. HR dot memes. Oh, there's some good science memes. So there's um, attorney memes, attorney dot memes, um, humorous underscore nurse, but humorous is spelled like the arm bone. Scrubs memes, but scrubs is S C R U B Z. Um, bedside rounds, but the last letter is also a Z. Apparently that's cool. Lab underscore rule. Code blue memes, meme nurse official, white collar humor, 
involuntary psych nursing, consulting humor, humor underscore me underscore RN. I know that's a lot. Science underscore humor, phys dot memes, P-H-Y-S dot memes. So there really are a lot of them. Like if you just try to go searching in your field to see what's out there, there's some really good stuff. And um, maybe if you follow me on Instagram, you can see who I follow. I'm not sure. I'm not, I promise I'm not trying to get followers, but that's what I've got. Okay, now I don't know where we are with time. Are we good? Yeah, we're, if somebody has a final uh, comment or question they'd like to ask, I would just point out too that I think there's something about memes that relates back to something Allison said about play being subversive. And I, I think that we steer away from that because we try to respect the hierarchies. But I, I do think that memes have a way to upturn things, expectations or power structures. And um, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's a playful way to, to be. So I, I like that as well. I, I will say that in the, you know, before the class starts, I'll send everybody an email for a learning management system. And I'll say, hey, if you want a preview of the class, you can follow my memes account. And the, the students are like, wait, you have a memes account? That's mm -hmm crazy and they're kind of a little bit more excited about the class just because you know a 50 year old suburban mom should not be running a memes account but here we are so it is a little surprising maybe it's a brave new world <laughs> i think when you, say, when you say you have a memes account um is that an instagram account i have an instagram account and a twitter account and a facebook page and i use um a separate thing that i use to post on all three all at once. Okay, thanks. Yeah, and I actually have them scheduled. They post at 5 a.m. Pacific time every day. So um, it's kind of a once a day thing. So you create new memes every day or you know, do you recycle? <laughs> I haven't done a lot of recycling. I do have a tendency to, to try to do new memes every day. And it sounds like that'd be a lot, but I don't know, it takes me maybe 30 minutes to an hour each week to put together a week's worth of memes. I also take recommendations or, or submissions from others. So I have a, a Gmail account so people can send in memes. And if I like them, I can share those. So um, it hasn't been too bad to keep up actually, surprisingly.